Hey, hey, period party people. Today's guest is Cheryl Woodman, a scientist, award-winning skincare formulator, acne expert, and creator of Honesty for Your Skin, which is a safe space where you can find science-based skin help. Cheryl also runs an online acne clinic where she helps women who've tried everything under the sun and feel stuck at rock bottom refine healthy, happy skin they feel comfortable and confident in. Cheryl breaks down the science behind why we get acne and gives some amazing solutions and resources for acne prone skin on this episode. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, Cheryl. Thank you for being here with me on the episode today. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. But same here. Same here. I feel like you've got immense knowledge around skincare and acne, and it's going to be super helpful for anyone who's listening. Um, and you know, one of the things I was thinking about in preparation for this episode was the fact that I feel as though acne has become a bit of a rite of passage with puberty and entering the teen years, and then it seems to be this thing that's now popped up in your. 20s and 30s as well, like adult acne is just this thing that happens as well. And it's kind of been normalized. Do you think Mm. that the prevalence of acne has increased in the last, I don't know, three, four, five decades? Uh, definitely for sure. And I, I mean, that's exactly what statistics are showing as well. Women over the age of 25, roughly 40 to 54% of us have some degree of facial acne, which, you know, that's, That's kind of a shocking statistic when you think about it. And there's definitely been an increase in acne. And I I definitely think that's linked to our westernized lifestyles. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. (laughs) I feel like, I know, right? Because I remember... I'm aging myself here, but everyone knows my age anyways because I talk about it. But I don't recall seeing as much acne in the... 80s and 90s when I was growing up as I do now in kids that are you know my age now that they were that I was then so I I do feel like there's been a significant increase and like what you said too with women in their in their adult women how many women have it have acne that's that's crazy to me yeah it's crazy and I think when you start to understand the science behind what causes acne in skin it becomes you know more clear why we're starting to see such a huge increase in acne ah okay well we'll talk about that so tell me why do we break out what is (laughs) happening to us Um, so if I, I love to confront this first of all, from kind of a, a skin health point of view, so we can kind of delve in and see what is changing in our skin biology, because once we understand what is changing, then you can understand why that's changing and how to influence it and how to kind of reverse it and get clear skin. Mm. Um, so when we break out, essentially there are three changes in our skin that are happening. First of all, something called hyperkeratosis. So hyperkeratosis, hyper just means when it's happening a lot. Keratosis, keratin is the skin protein. Um, And so basically our pores are having a skin thickening. And when that skin is thickening, they are really prone to clogging. So that's the first change. The second change is when our sebum making glands, which are called sebocytes, start to make extra sebum. And that extra sebum tends to be imbalanced. So it tends to be much stickier, much higher in fatty acids like oleic acid, much lower in fatty acids like linoleic acid. And this creates the perfect breeding ground for acne bacteria. Now, that's what we call acne bacteria colloquially, but actually acne bacteria live on all skin types and they're really healthy. But what happens when we break out is there's this loss of microbiome diversity. So this loss of lots of different bacteria inside our pores and the C. acnes become the prevalent bacteria. And that's when we start to see problems because our immune system recognizes that as foreign. And then it starts to react with inflammation, breakouts, blemishes, whiteheads, um, you name it. So you know, that is what's happening from a skin health point of view. Um, in order to change that, we need to understand mechanisms which cause those changes to happen um one of which is food food is a massive trigger um for acne um specifically because um so one of the ways food can trigger this uh vicious kind of acne causing cycle is via a hormone called insulin 
Um, insulin gets released in response to blood sugar changes. So when we have quick blood sugar changes, we release much more insulin. When we keep our blood sugar more stable, we kind of pacify that insulin hormone. We don't release as much. Now, insulin is a hormone which presses, kind of like pressing the accelerator pedal in your car um, on a pathway in our body called mTORC1. And this pathway um, is associated with growth in our bodies and mm -hmm. it causes specifically growth of our sebocytes, so our sebum and skin oil making glands. And when that happens, that oily, oily kind of skin propagates and the oil is imbalanced, that causes irritation and your pore which promotes hyperkeratosis that skin thickening and it's also the perfect breeding ground for sea nest. they they're an anaerobic bacteria which means they love to live in places with low oxygen levels which when your pores are filled with oil that that's what happens um so yeah healthy diet i have a lot of clients that come to me saying you know they're eating really healthily doing all the right things and it's not necessarily about eating healthily because some health foods can actually propagate that cycle and really boost levels of insulin really kind of press that accelerator pedal on mtorc1 and cause that excess production that imbalanced production of oil which leads into that acne causing cycle and there you have it folks <laughs> that <laughs> was amazing. And I think that one of the questions that comes up for me when I hear you talking about all of this is why do some people get acne and others don't? Because I have never had acne in my whole life. And I'm sorry, I know that sounds really annoying to some people who have probably struggled with it, but I have other problems. Yeah. <laughs> we all have problems. Yeah. <laughs> so and what is always, that? Yeah. I know. Yeah, exactly what you're asking. And that's, you know, when you have acne, I've experienced acne in the past. That's what you're constantly asking yourself. Why do I have acne when, you know, my sister doesn't or my like best friends don't what's going on for me. Um, and I think it's really helpful to understand, you know, there's always a, a mechanism that your body speaks to you as an individual. There's always kind of like that one place in your body that might be slightly weaker than the rest and it's the one that gives you symptoms so even though you know Nicole like you've never suffered with acne I know that you've had your own kind of health uh, journey well I tend to get melasma so I love yeah. that you describe this I call it the genetic weak link so I I love that because mm -hmm. it really is that and so I yeah I get melasma or I have gotten it for yeah. all of my 20s so I I feel the pain of all yeah. of you acne sufferers <laughs> yeah is that so we all have that that kind of that way that our body speaks to us so for some people that is acne and it's also very much to do you know with the sensitivity of your skin cells to certain hormonal changes and that does vary from person to person um I was talking about this on Instagram the other day because I see quite a lot of people uh you know they they're experiencing hormonal acne so the first kind of thing that they will go to do is hormone testing and then that hormone testing comes back as normal and it kind of feels like well I'm normal so what's going on here there's kind of nothing underneath the hood to look at so okay. where do I go next um but actually you know your hormones can be normal but your for you, you know, with, there's that tolerance range, but for you, they might be slightly elevated yeah. and your skin is sensitive to that. And therefore your skin is showing and developing symptoms of acne. Right. And what is normal, right? Because sort of the conventional medical perspective of normal is very different to maybe a functional or a naturopathic doctor's version of what normal is in testing. And like you said too, like what testing is actually being done? Because you could test your hormones, but which hormones are you testing? And, you know, are you testing insulin and how is insulin being tested? So there's a lot of factors I think that go into it. And I think there's so much confusion around hormone testing and then just getting these results back that don't really make sense or they're quote unquote normal. Do you feel yes, like that too? I do. I really do 100%, especially, you know, in the UK, if you're to go to the doctor and ask for hormone testing, there's really, you have very short appointment time. And usually, you know, you go for the appointment to ask, for the hormone testing to be done and there's not really any follow-up you'll just ring up for your results and be told that they're normal yeah. and there's not really kind of like a next step process that's discussed for where you should go next and that can just you know it leaves you feeling quite panicked because you have a symptom um yet there's no help there and you don't know where to turn to next 
Totally. I mean, we have the same problem here and we have to pay for it. So there's that. Yes. And also too, same thing. I always tell everyone who will listen to me, get copies (laughs) of your test results. Always get copies if you can. I don't know in the UK if you can, or if it's as easy as it is here, but generally it is. Yeah, 100%. Now we actually have an NHS app so you can log on and see your test results. And it gives you a little bit more information than you used to be able to get um, with kind of links to understand what the hormones are. It's, you know, it's moving, it's progressing, we're getting there, but there's still a way for us to go. They really are all in the dark ages, I feel like. (laughs) (laughs) I know. Fancy that we might be able to get access to our own test results. Shocker. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) So... Can you talk a little bit more about, um, you You mentioned some of what was going on with insulin and the mTORC1 and things like that. Like what's yeah. happening, you know, inside the skin? Is there anything that you might've missed out on that you wanted to share for people who are curious about what else could be going on? Yeah. So, you know, inside, inside your skin, it's, it's really it's interesting to think about the skin because it's kind of like this individual organ that we have and it has its own immune system. So we think of our immune system, you know, reacting to cold and viruses, and we have all these bacteria that live in our skin. So our skin actually has its localized immune system. Um, Mm. And it's, you know, from skincare point of view, it's really important to understand how to support your ideal skin health when you have acne. And it's a mistake I see a lot of people making because the traditional anti-acne skincare actually works very strongly against ideal skin health so um it ends up in the cycle of you might start a kind of three-step anti-acne skincare system and it feels like for a month or two your acne is getting better and then it gets worse again and it's almost like it's starting to spread and come back and you're back at step one right again um, and this is all because a lot of anti-acne skincare works against your skin health it damages your skin health it dries out so we talked about that extra oil production that's being made so really quick way to get rid of acne is to dry up that oil production but of course your skin needs oil to be healthy and happy and actually that oil is what helps to acidify your skin so our skin has its own ph balance which is a measure of acidity so how kind of acid or alkaline some thing is you know tap water tends to be neutral slightly alkaline which is ph7 um something like lemon juice ph3 um, and our skin is about ph 4.2 to 5 when it's healthy and happy and it's not being overwashed and that mm. ph balance helps to keep everything in check so it helps to keep the right bacteria growing on your skin so lots of kind of good bacteria a small amount of sea acne um, and those kind of good bacteria keep that sea acne in check on your skin but when our skin ph rises which a lot of anti anti acne skincare causes to happen it actually makes your skin the perfect environment for sea acne to hold on and it it almost makes you can think of it like the bacteria holding on to your skin the good skin bacteria it's just teasing them away and they, they, they stop holding hands with your skin and they fall off. And then the sea acne, it causes them to adhere harder. Um, and the longer you use this type of skincare, it can actually, you know, end up in quite a strong acne fueling cycle, because once you've lost that microbiome diversity, you can end up in a, in a kind of state of skin where you get what are called biofilms. I don't know if you've heard of biofilms before yeah Yeah. well usually we talk about it with a with the gut um so yes absolutely but we should definitely talk about what they are so that if someone's not familiar they know yeah so biofilms I like to describe if you're staging a sit-in um and you held hands with all the people next to you and you sat down you're so much stronger when you're doing that right like you're holding hands you're much harder to kind of pick up and chuck out the door because you're all connected (laughs) and that's exactly what a biofilm is so it's lots of bacteria kind of holding on to each other and when they do that they're so much stronger and actually you know it goes one step further in that they create this matrix of almost food for themselves so they're you know really happy and um yeah they can they can kind of just hold on inside your pores for a long time and that you know is another 
stage where women might be feeling like they're trying everything to get rid of their acne. They're even trying quite strong antibacterial skincare, maybe even benzoyl peroxide, or maybe they've been prescribed antibiotics and it's not working. They're not seeing um, a change in their symptoms. And that's a strong reason why that biofilm formation. Okay. This is something that I think is so interesting because what I have found is the more conventional approach to um, to acne is to just prescribe medication or yeah. prescribe the birth control pill. So I had a conversation with an OBGYN on, it's always, I'm always having these conversations, they're rather heated with these, with these doctors, but basically I, I did a post, I don't know, months ago about prescribing teenagers the pill for their mm. acne. And uh, I was like, we need to be looking at the root cause of the acne or whatever, whether it's their regular periods or whatever. I mean, really at this point, but talking about acne on this episode. So uh, prescribing the pill for acne for the teenager. And I'm just like, but there are so many potential contributors, which some of which you've just talked about. It's never just about shutting down hormones because your hormones are just responding to the potential fire <laughs> and they're, mm-hmm. you know, they're up or low, they're down or up or down, depending on whatever the original cause is. So can we talk a little bit about that? Like why it's so problematic to potentially prescribe a birth control pill, for instance, particularly for a teenager for acne? Oh, uh, yes, absolutely. I a hundred percent agree, you know, with what you've said, it's covering up those trigger causes of breakouts and they're so important to listen to what I'm about to say is going to sound very kind of shocking and controversial I love Um, it (laughs) but from everything the science is showing us you know the biology changes which lead to acne symptoms in our skin they're very much being linked with you know, quite extreme negative health outcomes that might not be happening for you now, but decades, decades down the line, it's your body warning you that if you continue doing what you're doing for several years, then you could end up, you know, with quite a negative health health outcome in future. And some of those negative health health outcomes include conditions like diabetes, um, PCOS, which for us women impacts our fertility, um, cancer, even Alzheimer's and dementia. So, you know, our body's really intelligent. It tries to warn us when something's not working as it should be. And when potentially we're not as healthy as our body would like us to be. And it gives us those symptoms to listen to for a reason. You know, it's trying to have a conversation with us that can't speak English. So it gives us something that we can actually, you know, visibly see. Absolutely. I could, I agree. I know. I say this all the time. Our bodies are not speaking in our language. (laughs) They're speaking in their own language and we really have to decipher it. And I think that that's so helpful for anyone who has been potentially prescribed a medication or a birth control pill for, you know, for acne or, or a skin breakout. So from um, the perspective of other internal contributing factors, can we talk a little bit about that? Because I know we talked about the skin microbiome. What about mm-hmm. our gut microbiome and, and how that might be playing a role in all of this? Uh, yes, absolutely. So, you know, there are so many different triggers for acne, which is why one person can feel like they're, you know, they just can't find a cure in kind of air quotes because they're trying all these things they've seen people try online on Instagram and it's cleared their skin, it's healed their acne, but for them, it doesn't work. And that's because there are so many different trigger causes for acne. Mm. You know, you've just mentioned another one there, gut health. It's so important. Um, Back in the 1930s, there were two scientists, Stokes and Pillsbury, and they wrote this paper and they identified what's called the gut Uh, brain skin axis and how each one of those kind of feeds into the other so if we have something going astray in one so for example from a brain point of view stress is a big uh, factor then it's going to propagate symptoms in the other two and you know in the gut that's going to propagate symptoms in your skin and your brain and so on that's kind of like the cycle that goes around and around and Um, Like you identified, gut health is so important. It's where we digest all our food and our nutrients. We think we're eating our food, but actually it's all the 
bacteria living in our gut that are eating and breaking down our food. And depending on that balance of bacteria, it depends on what we break that food down into and also impacts the health of the intestinal surface. Um, and if you know the body sensing that something's going wrong in that area, then there's inflammation that is caused and our skin is a really visible sign of inflammation that we're experiencing you know at its root its technical definition of acne it's a chronic inflammatory skin condition um so inflammation anywhere in the body being caused by any triggering factor has potential to show as acne um if that is your kind of like weak link so I wanted to talk a little bit about, speaking of factors, I wanted to talk about sun-induced acne or sun-induced oxidation of sebum. I believe that's what you talked about um, yeah. in the talking points that I have here. Can we talk about that? Like what's going on there? Yeah, sure. So I'm really glad you bring that up actually, because there's this kind of, you know, inside out, outside in factors. And right. with acne, when we first start treating it, you know, definitely myself, when I first experienced adult acne, it's something you see visually on your skin. So it makes sense, you know, want to use a skincare product on my skin to fix that. That's what I can see. But actually what we're not realizing is that those symptoms are propagating much more deeply in our skin and being caused a lot of the time by internal issues. So inside out factors, there are some causes of acne that are outside in predominantly. So what you just mentioned, the sun-induced oxidation of sebum. Mm -hmm. um, so oxidation is when something goes off, like when an apple browns. And when our sebum is oxidized, it contains an oil in about kind of 12 to 13%, which is actually a relatively high percent for a singular oil on our skin. Um, squalane, squalene even. Um, squalene you might have heard of um, the ordinary have a face oil called squalane oil. So squalane with an A-N-E at the end. It's skin similar because our skin contains an oil called squalene so that ends in E-N-E. Um, and the reason why you'll never find squalene, what is naturally on our skin in skincare products is because it's so easily oxidized. So it's really easy to make it go off. And UV light has a lot of energy. And so UV light can oxidize squalene in our skin. And we know that when squalene is oxidized, it makes it go comedogenic, which means it can block our pores. And it also causes irritation, um, which provokes hyperkeratosis in our pores. So that kind of goes back to that cycle we're talking about fueling acne, the hyperkeratosis, the change in oil production and the loss of microbiome diversity. Um, so that sun-induced oxidation of sebum um, can cause acne all of its own accord. It can also be a contributing factor when you have hormonally caused acne and, you know, you're not using proper skincare to protect against um, UV light causing and worsening that kind of acne cycle that's going on in your skin at that moment. Um, there are also some other uh, outside in causes of acne, one of which has been made famous by the pandemic that we're, um, we've just been through and are going through. <laughs> the masks. <laughs> the masks, yes, oh. the masks. So it's technically known as Acne Mechanica until a few years ago when we've now nicknamed it Maskne, which is essentially, yes. Wow. <laughs> We're creative, um, that's for sure. <laughs> we are. Um, so it's essentially where something is rubbing against your skin and it's taking off and removing layers of your skin barrier. Now, our skin barrier is like a shield. It's really important. And when layers of that shield are taken off, our skin becomes much more vulnerable. So we talked about skin pH. When layers of that shield are being rubbed off, quite often our skin pH levels will rise. And that causes an imbalance of the bacteria that are living on your skin. It also allows them to get much more deeply into your skin than they normally would be able to. And the combination of those factors activates our skin's immune function to kind of say, oh, hey, something's wrong here. You know, I need to react to this. And our immune system reacts with inflammation. And then we start to see breakouts in our skin. So yeah, that's also another um, fairly common cause of uh, facial acne at the moment. 
Oh my goodness. I know so many different things to consider. What do you think about um, sort of the normalization of acne? I suppose this is akin to the normalization of, of period pain and the fact that it is very much statistically normal, but biologically speaking, I, I certainly don't consider period pain to be normal. Um, so what are your mm. thoughts on, on, on the normalizing of acne or sort of like this acne positive movement, which, you know, again, like I want us all to love our bodies and all of that. But when we're talking about acne, it's not just spots on your face. There's clearly so much more going on as is the case with period pain. And you could be potentially missing out on a diagnosis uh, that could impact your health for many years to come. 100%. So I, we all have the right to feel, you know, beautiful in our bodies, regardless of what is going on. And I think that's really important. I see a lot of acne positivity on Instagram. And I think it's great if you're going through that health journey at that point in time, and you are working to identify those trigger causes, it's definitely a tool to use in that short term um, to get that mindset part of the equation working for your benefit. Um, I think that there is some risk when acne positivity steps towards normalizing acne and you know the risk is that it has the potential to cause somebody to not take any action to investigate why they're having these symptoms um because our body does have an ideal health and that ideal health isn't um necessarily when we have that those changes that i spoke about in our skin so when our skin is making more oil that's imbalanced when we have hyperkeratosis and when we have that lack of microbiome diversity and that's what our body is trying to alert us to you know we're we're very much programmed to care about our skin health and that's for evolutionary biological reasons and that in the past that would be how we chose a mate to you know have a have children with we're looking to choose the fittest mate that we can um, and the health of our skin is uh, showing how healthy we are on the inside so it's definitely something that's important to listen to um, and for that reason I some of the content that I'm seeing on Instagram these days I'm wondering if it's going too far and in my opinion sometimes I do believe it's going it's going too far to normalize acne as a you know it's normal um to live with and not investigate yeah yeah and I, I think that that's certainly the case like I said with a whole range of of period related problems as well it's just like well this is just the norm for so many people so it's just normal and and like we said, I think that it, that is potentially really problematic and it's certainly not to shame anyone by any means. It's just about what could be going on and causing this. And of course you want to love your skin and, and love your body and love your menstrual cycle, I hope. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's one of those things where I, I continue to see this as well, sort of in all areas of, of women's health, I suppose you could say that uh, there are, these movements to, to just accept those things rather than dig a little bit deeper. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think that digging a little deeper is so, so important. It's like an alert system that's built into our biology. And the way I kind of describe it, I liken it to, I've got a dog, Aries. He's a, a lurcher, he's a rescue um, <laughs> and he loves humans. So, you know, if you were to come to my front door right now, his tail would be wagging so hard that it would go around <laughs> in a full circle. Um, but he doesn't feel the same about other dogs. Um, and he has quite a lot of triggers. You know, if another dog comes towards him and he doesn't expect it, if a dog's pulling on the lead, if a dog's barking at him and he has lots of warning levels. So, you know, Aries one warning level is he bears his teeth. Warning level number two, he starts, growling in his throat number three a whiff and it literally does sound that word is like a whiff and then if that's not listened to he'll start barking and all of those signals are saying you know back off something's wrong here I don't like it do something about it help me um and that's what our skin does as well you know when we're getting symptoms of acne that's what it's kind of saying to us first of all we might get a littering of small spots um and then they might 
be becoming more persistent. And then what once were less inflamed whiteheads are becoming more like papules and pustules, those blind under the skin spots that never seem to come to a head, um, but they're very lumpy and bumpy. Um, and that's really our skin shouting for help. You know, it's like my dog Aries barking at another dog to say something's wrong here. And, you know, we need to listen to those signals um, and it's okay to listen to those signals and do something about it. Um, yeah. I could, yeah. What a great analogy. I love that so much. And I completely agree. I feel like I might have to borrow that from you. <laughs> <laughs> My dog, Charlie is also a rescue and he's got a similar pattern of behavior. Oh, so yeah, I know they're the best, but they also, you know, they got some trauma. So yes. And, and I think that it's, it's really helpful to be able to see it that way. So there's a few things. Mm -hmm. First of all, when you started talking about pus and postules and things like that, I have to tell you, I went down a rabbit hole the other night on TikTok with these different dermatologists who squeeze things on video and oh, my gosh. head was exploding. Holy, <laughs> holy cow. I must have spent two and a half hours being like, ah! for anyone yeah. who's not watching this, my hands over my mouth. I was shocked anyway, traumatized all the things, but it's just, you can't take your eyes off of it. So anyway, that's a total side note, but you had said something about hormonally driven acne. And so mm -hmm. insulin is obviously a hormone. Cortisol is a hormone. If these two hormones are out of whack, typically your sex hormones are going to be as well. That's kind of how this whole thing works um, mm -hmm. because they all communicate mm -hmm. with each other and your sex hormones are subordinate to those two big hormones. And so there's, there are going to potentially be problems. And again, it depends on those genetic weak links, which ones are going to be impacted the most for some of us it ends up being high androgens and, uh, you know, or a diagnosis with PCOS or something like that. And for others, it's low progesterone or low estrogen or whatever. Um, so how does that work exactly? Like, because obviously a lot of people who are listening get acne at different times in their cycle. So is this mm -hmm. a, is this a problem with the sex hormones or is this a problem with uh, the other hormones or, you know, the gut health or like what's triggering that? And, you know, like, is it the sex hormones or is it a combination maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, that's such, such a great question. Such an involved question. There's a lot of levels to Sorry. it. <laughs> um, no, I love it. I love it. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm going to start off by saying, you know, if you're seeing hormonal acne, your skin kind of has a, what I describe as a battery pack. So mm. if your, if your body is in a sense of a state of stress, that battery pack is really depleted. So your skin becomes much more reactive to, for example, changes in your monthly cycle. So that's kind mm. of, you know, step number one, I think you pulled up a really important point there in terms of, you know, sex hormones and those other more upstream hormones like insulin, cortisol. Um, I think for many women, you don't necessarily realize in the beginning of, you know, a health journey or a journey journey with acne what's going on there like I certainly remember myself when I first started experiencing acne and identified it as hormonal I felt like there wasn't anything I could do about my sex hormones you know I'm a woman I have periods it happens maybe I just have to live with this um I obviously knew you know you can go to a doctor and get medication which is hormonal you know the birth control pill or for acne spirolactone um and because of that, and because I worked in the drug industry, I just had this link that there wasn't anything that could be done other than medicate it. Um, and then when you start to look into the research and understand the science behind our hormones, then you start to identify that actually, you know, every day we can impact our hormones. We talked about diet in the beginning, you know, diet is a very simple way every day to impact those hormones. Every meal you're having is changing those hormones that are being released, you know, insulin, can cause our ovaries to create more androgens so you know we've got power and control there over our sex hormones um and like we said before you know it's not as simple as eating healthily i do have a 
one page acne diet cheat sheet of yes, no, sometimes foods. That's a really great starting point. I think we're going to link to in the show notes. Yes. Um, so it's really simple for somebody just to pick up and use that as a starting point because it is quite overwhelming in the beginning. You know, there are foods, it's not just foods which um, spike your blood sugar that can cause release of insulin. Some foods cause extra release of insulin, even though they're not spiking your blood sugar. Um, so Yes, it's those those upstream hormones, um, insulin, cortisol, they're really important to work on um, and they have that knock on impact on your sex hormones too. Um, our skin cells actually have direct receptors for stress hormones. Um, these receptors I like to describe, you know, like different glasses. So we've got wine glasses, whiskey glasses, brandy glasses, and technically, you know, red wine should only go in the red wine glass. And that's kind of like the receptors in our skin cells. So our sebocytes have receptors for a stress hormone known as corticotrophin releasing hormone. So when we're stressed, we release this hormone. It can bond into our sebocytes, so our sebum making glands, and it basically activates lipogenesis, which is causing the sebum gland to make more sebum. And that causes this oily skin unbalance of oil lack of microbial diversity, hyperkeratosis, it all kicks off again. It also causes um, extra expression of an enzyme that converts DHEA into testosterone in our skin. So again, that's a more potent androgen that leads into that extra sebum production cycle. Um, so yeah, it's you know really important to be working on those upstream uh, hormonal inputs into our body. That is so good. And it makes me think about oh, so many things. I think the first is if someone has acne and has had it since they were a teenager, for instance, or felt like they've had it their whole life, mm -hmm. um, is there hope for them? Like, can you get rid of acne? or yeah. you just stuck with it <laughs> <laughs> or some variation yeah. of it. <laughs> Absolutely not stuck with it. You know, everybody has the ability to have clear skin again. And I know exactly what that feels like when you've struggled with acne, you feel like it's going to be your skin forever. And it's such a sinking feeling, but please know anybody listening to this, if you have acne right now, you know, your skin can be clear again. You just need to identify what that set of triggering causes are for you. It's quite common to go um, through a stage in puberty where you develop acne. Most people think that's for sex hormones, but actually what the research is showing is when you're going through puberty, you also go through a period of insulin resistance. When you're insulin resistant, your body tends to release more insulin for the same effect. And so this kind of mass release of insulin hormones um, leads into the pathways that we've spoken about. That is so amazing. And it's really, it really makes so much sense. And so what, as a scientist and a skincare formulator, what is it that you start with? Like, are there a few things that people can get started with? Um, because like you said, so many of us just go to the topicals, which clearly mm. are really problematic in themselves. So where do you start? Yeah, absolutely. Well, when I'm working with somebody who's acne, I work to kind of naturally heal those changes in the skin biology, which cause acne. And that's through a combination of diet, lifestyle and skincare factors. One of the simplest tips that I can give anybody right now who's experiencing acne quite often um, when you have acne, you end up using quite aggressive cleansers on skin, you know, high salicylic acid concentration, maybe a benzyl peroxide face wash, um, maybe a face wash that is drying your skin and you're using it twice a day. Um, in my scientific opinion, you should only be washing your skin once a day in the evening. Um, this is because when we wash our skin, we're actually interfering with our skin biology. One of the most important things is our skin's pH level because that helps to keep our bacterial balance in check. You know, there's good skin bacteria really happy and those C. acnes bacteria in the right population levels. But when we wash our skin, 
studies show that our skin pH instantly changes. So it rises, you know, if you think about the pH of tap water being about seven and our skin pH 4.2 to five, when it's really healthy and happy, that's quite a difference there. And if you live in a hard water area, your pH is over 8.5. So that's really quite alkaline. And the more times you uh, wash your face, it takes your skin longer to reacidify itself. And that's exaggerated if your skin is under any kind of stress. So, you know, when we're stressed, I think almost all of us can identify things don't happen as smoothly in our lives. Um, and that's exactly the same for our skin biology. When it's stressed, things don't happen you know, as quickly or as healthily as they should be. So the simplest tip and often a starting tip is, yeah, get rid of the face wash in the morning um, and only be washing your skin in the evening. Also, I would recommend avoiding anti-acne type cleansers and instead using a really gentle cleanser that doesn't leave your skin feeling squeaky clean because that mm. squeaky clean feeling is your skin barrier having holes in it. So it's like that shield we talked about earlier, having layers of it taken away and your skin being much more vulnerable, which is only encouraging a dysbiosis of your skin's microbiome. So yeah, simplest tip stop washing your face in the morning only wash it in the evening and use a really gentle cleanser thank you that's so so helpful and where can everyone find more information about your work and your skincare line which sounds amazing by the way Oh, thank you. Um, so you can find me at honestyforskin.co.uk. Um, and you can also find me on Instagram at honestyforskin. Amazing. Cheryl, thank you again so much. I feel like I learned so much about how the skin works in this episode. And for anyone who's listening, definitely check out Cheryl's resources and her skincare line as well. And thank you again for your knowledge and your work in this area it is so needed. Oh, it's my pleasure. You know, if I can help one woman out there to not feel like I felt when I had adult acne, then that's my job done and my day made. So thank you for having me. I feel exactly the same way about period problems. So yes, <laughs> we're very aligned. Thanks again, Cheryl. <laughs> Thank you. That's a wrap. Be sure to click that subscribe button to join me for more Girl Talk on Menstrual in upcoming episodes. But in the meantime, check out my latest period party episode. And if you're looking for a deeper dive into your hormones, go ahead and take my period quiz at nicolejardim.com quiz.